the chief has overcome the lies, the good news of his majesty in his Christ. And it is vital that we raise our tribal flag, the flag of the conquering lion of the tribe of Yehuda. Okay, let's touch on this important subject. The Mentaf Kedus, the Holy Bible, speaks, speaks of four comings of Christ. According to the scriptures, there are four comings of Christ that are of the Mashiach, the Messiah, that are mentioned. First, in the order that we have here, is as a babe, as a Hittite, born of this Din Gilmarion, of the Holy Virgin Mary. He came as a babe, and that is called the first the first coming, right? Then, secondly, is to the Ancient of Days, what's mentioned in Daniel chapter 7, in particular, Daniel chapter 9. So, as the Ancient of Days, in other words, as a, a Shemagale, as an ancient, as a, as an elder, as an old man. Remember, they said that Jesus Christ died at 33, around 33, 34. That's a young man. I'm sure he wasn't prematurely aged or anything like that, but that, that's 33, and we can look at 33 year olds and see that basically they still, most times, appear pretty young. But here's it's specifically not just saying a mature man, but it's saying an ancient, an ancient, which is Shemagale, which is an elder. Now, the third coming of Christ is, is in glory which is called oftentimes the second coming, the second coming of Christ. And then finally, fourthly, is to restore the earth and to set up the kingdom, set up the Malkut or the Mengish, the kingdom and Gishta Samayat, the kingdom of the heavens. Now, what's interesting about this, there's a couple of things we've mentioned that were interesting about this. First of all, the Ancient of Days quote in Daniel chapter 7 actually occurs in the Luikidon in the Old Testament. So if we say, some would say, well, actually that should be first, and then coming as a babe, which happens in the New Testament. But you have to remember that all these things are given in types and it's a vision. All the prophets were giving different similes and different parables, but they were all speaking of one overall encompassing vision, which is the vision of God or the Rai, what we call revelation. So that's what we can find in other prophets and other prophecies, even in the gospel says that that Christ, the Messiah, Yehoshua HaMoshiach spoke through the Nabiyat or the Nabim, he spoke through the prophets. So we have the Ancient of Days spoken of as as second here, but some could say first, remember Don L was having a vision, he's looking forward. Now what's interesting is that connected with Don L in Daniel chapter 7, connected with that is also the restoration of the earth and the setting up of the kingdom. This is the setting up of the kingdom would occur in the time of the ten horns of the book of Daniel. Let's go there for a moment. It's very important for us as newborns, as born again Rastafari, it's very important for us to properly digest and understand or understand these, these very important events. If we don't understand it or properly understand it, we're going to make a lot of so-called prophecy errors. And we're going to be, you know, led to and fro, you understand, and, and, and believe all sort of different half stories. But we need to get the fullness of it. And when we look at the book of Daniel, it speaks about uh, the setting up of the kingdom in the time of these kings. And it links, here it goes right here, verse 44. In verse 44, it says... And in the days of these kings, in the days of these kings, these ten horns show the God, it says, of heaven. Now, Revelation uses similar language, which is very interesting. It speaks about the God of the earth, and then it speaks about the God of the heaven. You know what I'm saying? Some would think that well, these are two different gods. It's not two different gods, but it's speaking of the relative relationship, you know what I'm saying, of the true God, Ha Elohim's activity. Now, here it's speaking about and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Notice this says, so it shall set up what? Shall set up a kingdom. So it gives us specifically in the days of these kings. 
So now if we look at these four comings of Christ, and what says restore the earth and to set up the kingdom, it really should be to set up the kingdom. And the kingdom would be set, you know, saying that we learned this kingdom would not be destroyed. So there would be uh, anti Christ attack on this particular kingdom. Now we're going to make this link with the King of Kings and the kingdom of David renewed in Ethiopia that the King of Kings, Moa and Besa, Zen Yehuda, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, represent and how that kingdom has not been destroyed, even though people in the world will tell you about the so-called socialist communist revolution of 1974 to 75, the true kingdom of the king of kings and his christ has not been destroyed and was this very same kingdom that was set up in the days of these kings speaking about those 10 kings those 10 horns that both daniel and revelation and johannes arai speaks of and that equals the club of rome you always in the club of rome the establishment of the club of rome which divided the earth into 10 different spheres into 10 different zones you understand, and this is what the UN and this is what the so-called New World Order and the Illuminati secret societies are working on right now. But from those days, 1950, I think 56 or 59, roughly in the late 50s, and then we have 61, we have the OAU, some very significant events, as well as Iron Mountain Report. Those of you who haven't seen Iron Mountain Report need to check out Iron Mountain Report. You can order a, a very good copy that we have at the lojsociety.org on our doc videos page because you will now understand that these things were, uh, were already in motion and in progress in manifestation. You know, so when we look at these four comings, we have to now see that, that after Christ has obeyed, the next coming actually is the Ancient of Days. And we say the Ancient of Days is the King of Kings of Ethiopia. The Ancient of Days prophecy was revealed in and is revealed in and through the coming of the King of Kings, Kadamawi Haile Selassie, as well as the setting up of a kingdom according to Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, where it says, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, a Malkut or a Mengisht, which shall never be destroyed, which shall never be destroyed. This is why we still have faithful Rastafari to this very day bearing witness, faithful witness of the king of kings and his Christ, the king of kings in and through his Christ, through Getachina Methanetachin Jesus Christos, Adonenu Yehoshua Ha Moshiach. But it goes on after the colon says, and the kingdom, notice what it says, first it's a kingdom, then it says the kingdom shall not be left to other people. The kingdom should not be left to any other people. So that kingdom of the king of kings, that Hebraic, that Hebrew, you understand, Ethiopian, faithful and holy Ethiopian, we're not speaking about the secular Ethiopian, the secular Ethiopians became the Judas Iscariots, you understand, who sought to overthrow and rebelled against the one who raised them up. We have another prophecy in Isaiah, where it speaks about Isaiah, about the children who were brought up. It was those very children, you understand, those very college so-called students who went to his Imperial Majesty's college and school who bit the bait of the New World Order, the Illuminati, you understand, and did what Judas Iscariot did and sold the King of Kings, you understand, sold Christ in his kingly character for those 30 pieces of sil silver. It's very interesting, very interesting, but let's check this out. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. So no other people, the kingdom of the King of Kings has not been left to no other people. The people that the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ has been left to is the true and faithful Rastafari, the true and faithful Ethiopian Hebrews. You understand? So that same Ethiopian Hebrew kingdom that was renewed in Ethiopia, you understand, with the firstborn sons, 1,000 from every tribe. You understand? The Kippur and the Gesh bears witnesses, 1,000 from every tribe, so 12,000 return to Ethiopia with King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba's only son, Minyalik, or David, Dawi, Dagmawi, Dawi, David II. 
Now, another point that we would like to touch on that many have allowed to be spread and to be circulated. You understand that the Ark of the Covenant was stolen by Queen of Sheba's son, by Menelik. The Ark of the Covenant was not stolen. That is a lie from the pits of hell. You understand the Ark of the Covenant could not be stolen. It belongs to God. It belongs to Jah. It belongs to Yahweh. You understand? So it cannot be stolen. You understand? What 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 the Ark removing itself from old Israel of King Solomon's time just prior to his apostasy to Ethiopia and the kingdom of David according to the cover of the Negev, it doesn't speak about the Solomonic so-called dynasty or dynasty it really speaks Get up.